We're continuing to solve trig equations and now we want to look at some problems where there's a little more math involved. You remember I said solving this trig equations are really two steps. The first step is to get the trig function by itself and then the second step is to solve the equation. So for instance, here's a recent example. Get the trig function by itself, in this case secant, and then of course for this problem I switched to cosine and went from there. And these next problems have a few little twists where we have to do some extra algebra and even maybe some factoring to solve these equations. So let's look at this first one. The equation is 8 cosine squared of theta. So when they want to square a trig function, what they do is they put the exponent after the trig function. So just to be clear, Cosine squared of theta written like this means the same thing as cosine of theta, the whole thing squared. It's just they like to write it like this. So the goal here is, once again, the solution is going to be what are the angles for theta that make this equation true? And we're looking for, for specific solutions So we're looking for all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So what I'm going to do here, once again, let me do a quick comparison. If I had 16x squared equals 4, and I was wanting to solve for x, I would divide both sides by 16. Whoops. And then if my goal, well, first of all, I would reduce this to one fourth. And then if my goal was to solve for x, how do I get from x squared to x? If you remember, what you do is you have to take the square root. The square root of x squared is x. Of course, you have to take the square root of both sides of this equation. Now, because we're going to see this in a minute, if you remember from algebra, a fraction under a square root can be broken up. Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, but here's something very important that you cannot forget, and if you forget this, then you will not solve this problem correctly. Whenever we take the square root of a number, the answer is plus or minus one half. So there are really two solutions, negative one half and one half. So don't forget that when you take the square root of a, num square root of a number, you get plus and minus solution. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, my ultimate goal is to solve for cosine of theta. First thing I'll do is I'll divide both sides by 8. Of course, this reduces to 1 fourth. So just like over here, my goal is to have cosine of theta equal something. Well, if it's cosine squared of theta, how do you get rid of something that's squared? You take the square root. Of course, have to take the square root of both sides. 
Now, square root of 1 fourth, we actually just did it over here, ends up being plus or minus 1 half. So what we do now is we actually now have two equations to solve, cosine theta equals negative 1 half, and then we have to find solutions for both these equations, and we're going to look At taking one trip around the unit circle and seeing what to look. So really what I could do is to make it simple let's go around the unit circle <clears throat> well let's just do the negative one half first. So I'm looking where what are the angles where the cosine is negative one half and actually here's one two pi over three Now you've been using the circle enough to know there's probably another one. So two pi over three and down here, cosine of four pi over three is negative one half. So there are actually two solutions for the cosine of theta equals one half. But now I have to look at the second equation and the second equation is cosine of theta equals one half, positive one half. So for that, I look at the unit circle. I notice here, cosine of pi over three is one half. And then also, cosine of five pi over three is one half. So for this equation we started with, there are actually four angles that are solutions. So it's sort of interesting how that worked out. So that's what happens. Sometimes you're going to have problems where you start with the trig function squared. This is the kind of thing you do. Another kind of problem you will have, and this looks a little messy and maybe it looks complicated at first. How about square root of two times the sine squared of theta minus sine of theta <clears throat> First time we've had this where we have an equation with the sine function in two different places. I've got a sine of theta here and a sine squared of theta here. Of course, the goal is still the same to find the solution where the solution is going to be this angle. And it's going to be between... 0 and 2 pi. And let me do what I did a minute ago. Let me draw an analogy between this and what you used to do in algebra to solve something like this. Because what we're going to do here is actually going to factor. And whenever you solve an equation by factoring, you want one side of the equation to be equal to 0, which it already is. But instead of looking at trig functions, let's look at if we were to just, oops, what would we do if we just had a similar kind of equation, but we just had x's? What you learn to do in factoring, the very first step in factoring is to see if you have a greatest common factor. Is there something in common in all my terms? I have two terms here. I notice I have an x squared here and an x here. I can actually factor out an x, and I can create parentheses. 
And then what happens is, for your solutions, you take each of your factors. This is the first factor. So here's a solution. And then you take that whole parenthesis. And now you would solve this equation for x, and that would be your other solution. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm almost going to treat sine of theta almost like it was this variable x. So I'm going to factor out a sine of theta. So I'm going to create parentheses. So if it's been a while since you factored, what this is doing, it's saying if I take this times this, it's going to equal this first term. And if I take negative 1 times this, it's going to equal negative sine of theta. So once again, sine of theta is common in both these terms, so I can factor it out. And now, since I have sine of theta times this parenthesis, the solution is going to be when either one of these factors equals zero. So I need to take sine of theta, set equals zero, and I need to solve for theta. Matter of fact, I'll just do it right now. So this says, Go to the unit circle, or think in your head. Let's go find an angle, one trip around unit circle, an angle where the sine is zero. That actually happens at two places, zero and pi, All right? Zero is over here, sine of zero, zero, sine of pi, zero. Now someone might think of also putting in 2 pi. But you notice here, they say greater than or equal to 0 or less than 2 pi. So in the answer, they're not wanting you to include 2 pi. We are going to include 0, so it's here. And of course, pi is in this range here, but we don't include 2 pi. So from this part of the solution, I have two angles that are solutions, but then I also have to take this parenthesis and find the solutions that result from this parenthesis. So you take the parenthesis, and you said equal to zero, and I need to solve this. So here's where I now have to get the sine of theta by itself again. First thing else I'll do is I'll add one to both sides. I want to get the sine of theta by itself, divide both sides by the square root of 2. So now my solution is going to be, I'm looking for the angles, one trip around unit circle, where the sine is 1 over square root of 2, or, and this is why I pointed this out to you earlier, on the unit circle, I'm not going to see 1 over square root of 2, but I can rewrite this as square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I go to the unit circle and I say, one trip around the unit circle, what are the angles where the sine is square root of 2 over 2? I don't have to look, because usually I can remember the unit circle in my head power over 4, and 3 power over 4. We want to confirm it. Power over 4, the sine of square root of 2 over 2. 3 power over 4, the sine of square root of 2 over 2. So actually for this problem, once again, there are actually four solutions. All right, one more problem I see. This one looks a little messy, but actually it's simpler than one we just did. 
a little simpler in terms of the math part of it, but the trig part of it might be interesting. Cotangent of theta minus 1 times cosecant of theta minus 1. So here we have a cotangent cosecant. Now the nice thing is, because these are two parentheses multiplied by each other and they equal zero, it's almost like they have factored this. Uh, just to be clear, we're looking for all the angles between zero and two pi that are solutions for this equation. So what I can do is I can take each of these parentheses and set them equal to zero and find the solutions for each of these. And then that's gonna be my solution for the whole equation. So this one first. Cotangent of theta minus one equals zero. I wanna get the trig function by itself, so I add one to both sides. Now that I'm ready to figure out theta, I don't wanna work with cotangent. I want to work with tangent, but once again, tangent of theta is one over the cotangent of theta, so in this case, I'm needing to solve this equation, tangent of theta equals one. So I think of the unit circle, so tangent, I have to think of sine over cosine, so since sine over cosine has to equal one, I'm looking for the angles on the unit circle where sine and cosine are identical. And hopefully you've been using this unit circle enough now that you realize that that occurs. Power over four, sine and cosine are the same. And five power over four, they're the same. They're both negative. So it looks like there are gonna be two solutions for this, pi over four. So those are the solutions from this first parenthesis. Now I take the second parenthesis and set it equal to zero and solve this. So once again, get the trig function by itself. So I'll add one to both sides. Now, I don't want to work with cosecant, so I remember that cosecant and sine are sort of grouped or paired together. The sine is one over the cosecant of theta, which is one. So I'm really looking to solve this equation. Where is the sine of theta equal to one? And for one trip around the unit circle, there's actually only one angle. That's pi over two. So now, from the first part, that equation in this part, looks like there are going to be three angles that are going to be a solution to this equation. All right, so a little trig, a little algebra, hopefully not too bad.